Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to you tuning into our tutorial. Today, we're going to chat about one of the top targets for attacks, one of the main attack vectors, which are code vulnerabilities, and how we can tackle and fix this using Stackspot AI. So, we whipped up this quick command here that helps us pull together a bunch of security knowledge bases, especially the OWASP top 10, among others, so we can spot code vulnerabilities. But not just that, also fix those vulnerabilities automatically. Lots of market tools can spot these vulnerabilities, but here at Stackspot AI, we took it up a notch. Besides spotting vulnerabilities, we can also crank out fixed code, making the developer's life a breeze to ensure they're churning out secure code that won't be exploited by some hacker down the line. So this holds regardless of language. Use Java, Python, .NET, or infrastructure coding, like Azure Code, Terraform, for instance. So, I'm going to show you all how we can, using Stackspot AI, whip up this quick command that can spot those vulnerabilities and also patch them up. So, logging in here on the Stackspot AI platform, I'm going to head over to the Agent Setup option. And the first thing we did was create a knowledge source right here, called Security Defaults. Inside this knowledge source, one of the key things is that we can, for instance, specifically and precisely customize information for our client. So in this example, I've set it up so that whenever I'm creating variables, like in AWS's secret manager, the region I'm going to use is East 1, which is Sao Paulo. For instance, I also created an option here saying all variables in AWS secret manager will follow a pattern, like PRD, stack spot, the name of my variable. So with this, I can customize this info with the cloud, like with AWS or Azure or another. I can tell which region I'm in and set a bunch of specific parameters for my client. Plus, we've thrown in a bunch of code snippets here that tackle specific security issues across various languages like Java, Python, and whatnot. Also, as mentioned, in this lesson, we're guiding you to top sites that provide this info like the OWASP top 10 I already mentioned. Heading over to quick command. This quick command organizes a bunch of steps here so I can achieve this goal, which is fixing the code. So I created a flow here where I initially engage in some detailed prompt engineering so it can reliably bring me the most optimal outcome. Once I finally get the result, I can throw this fixed code up on the screen and wrap it up. So if I go here to the usage monitor, I can see, for example, which workspaces of Stackspot this quick command is already deployed in. So it is deployed in security, runtime, and more. Now, I'll show you how to use this quick command. So I'm heading here to my Visual Studio. Already got it downloaded here, for those who haven't yet. I've already downloaded the Stackspot AI, and I'm about to log in. All right, I'm logged in. Going to pick my workspace here. In this case, I'm going to go with the security workspace, but for you, you'll pick your specific workspace. All right, I'm logged in. So I'm going to show you a first example here in Java. In this particular illustration right here, we've actually got an SQL statement that's employing a string concatenation technique. This indeed ain't a good methodology for us to utilize, because unfortunately, someone could execute an SQL injection here to exploit this vulnerability. So here, the first thing I'm actually going to do is select and highlight my entire code. Or if I want to accelerate the process, I can just select the chunk of code I want analyzed. So I'm going to go here with my right button, Stackspot AI, on the My Quick Commands option. I'm going to pick Stackspot Code Analysis 1.0 and it's going to start processing right here. All right, he replied to us with the results. So the first step here, it's actually going to tell you what the vulnerability is. He found an SQL injection vulnerability here. Another thing we can do is to point out this vulnerability. Rank the vulnerabilities if there's more than one. In this case, he found an SQL injection vulnerability. He'll explain why he stumbled upon it 
and what this vulnerability means for those not in the know. So he's going to break it down here. For instance, how you're using something as input attached to the string. And someone could say, throw in an or one equals one deal. And just like that, they'd list, for example, all data from your database. So he's going to show you how to fix the vulnerability. And for Java, it's by using a prepared statement. And here, finally, it'll spit out the corrected code for you. Just copy and paste and make sure it's working. So here, for instance, with the query situation, it swapped out that string concatenation for prepare statement. So now it's using prepare statement here and then setting the ID directly. So you fix that vulnerability. This code here has other vulnerabilities. For example, this part here, where I'm using a hard-coded password and stuff, could also benefit from using the quick command to fix it. And it'll set you up with an AWS secret manager. To save some time here, I'm going to jump to a Python example. So in this Python example right here, I've got an XSS vulnerability, XSS exploitation, that can also be used for this hack, because I'm not using any kind of data input sanitization here. So once again, I pick out the code I want scrutinized, come over here to stackspot.ai, my quick commands, security code analysis. All right, it's back here for us. So once again, he's going to first lay out what the vulnerability was. In this case, XSS. He's going to give us a rundown of what this vulnerability is all about, how it can be exploited by injecting nasty scripts into the page. He's going to tell you exactly which code got hit, where it happened, and which line. This is exactly where we're putting in the user's input. And he's going to explain how to fix it. It's actually going to generate the fixed code already. He elaborates on how to fix it and even tells you how to tweak your code so he can stay safe. So check it out. Now he's already skillfully handling this right at the user's input. The same thing we can indeed see with another illustration in Python where we're here interpreting and passing an XML. And actually, we've got a vulnerability here. So I'm going to highlight this code, right click, and just as we did previously, let's execute it once more. So we the AI returned the query. Now let's take a brief moment to look here. Just like we figured, he acknowledged the vulnerability of XXE injection, that is, XML external entity injection. So then it is going to give a comprehensive rundown and will precisely explain where this vulnerability is located. This particular vulnerability was essentially caused by the inclusion of that external reference within the XML document here. And it tells us how we can make the code better and effectively fix it. For instance, throwing in solvers as false. So next up, it is going to spit out the corrected code for me right here, just like it showed us earlier. It has already fixed the code for you. And here we also have got the opportunity to pick the new code. And right here in Stackspot AI, we have got the option to copy this code, to paste it somewhere, or to create a new file with this generated code. So you've got these options right here available for you to fully utilize this specific code. So right now you might be wondering if this method exclusively works for applications. But no, we're going to show that this is tremendously important for the whole infrastructure as code, IAC part two. So I grabbed the example here in Terraform. And of course, you can and totally should use Stackspot's plugins to build your infrastructure. But even to whip up the plugin, we can use our vulnerability fixing app, our quick command. So for instance, I'm currently setting up over here in West Virginia. And I'm actually setting up a public bucket for everyone. And with that, anyone on the internet could access my bucket. So unless I was doing this to share some content with the entire world, if this information was private stuff from Zoop or the client, that would be a significant issue. So I'm going to dial up this Terraform code and effectively use the quick comment feature from Stackspot AI. I rely on the Stackspot code analysis tool to assess the security of my Terraform code 
and ensure its robustness. Well, we've got our feedback from analyzing our quick command. All right, let's dive in. He pointed out here that it's a Terraform code, and he's even breaking down what this code is doing, which is pretty cool, especially if you're looking at a Terraform code and you're not too familiar with what it's supposed to do. So he's explaining here that it's setting up a public S3 bucket with a read access policy. So with that, you've got a whole bunch of vulnerabilities. So the first one, which is public read access, means anyone on the internet could list the contents of that bucket. And the open bucket policy is also what lets you do a get over. You can grab anything that's stored in this bucket. So, unless this was intentional, such as you disseminating some form of public content, it would be problematic if we were handling Zoops or clients data. So, it actually provides you with some techniques on how to address the issue. So you switch the ACL to private, and also to review and restrict the bucket policy. And then it'll spit out this code for you, all fixed up, switched from public read to private, as we can see, and it's also made some tweaks to the policy. So he restricted it here. He left a comment on this part where you let anyone grab this object. So folks, just to quickly recap, through our quick command feature, which is readily available right there in your workspace. Circling back here, our StackSpot Code Analysis 1.0 enables you to execute a comprehensive code analysis in any programming language, whether it's for an application or some piece of infrastructure code. And remember, the primary target for hacks and cyber attacks is fundamentally all about those application vulnerabilities. So it's pointless for firms to pour money into perimeter security if the application is wide open. So this right here is a pretty cool practice. So you finish coding, your code is all set. Run our quick code, it'll do an analysis, tell you if there's any vulnerabilities. If there's one, he'll break down the vulnerability for you. Not just that, it'll also go the extra mile. Most tools stop at this analysis stage, but StackSpot Code Analyzer, it spits out code ready to go. So it's just about grabbing it, copying the ready code, and ensuring it doesn't break anything, but it'll have the vulnerability fixed. So with that, when you're about to push your code, you're already making sure it's secure, so you can chill, knowing you won't have any security issues. When it's time to push your code and stuff, there won't be a tool pointing out problems. It's going to break your build, and you'll have issues. You'll need to figure out the vulnerability, how to fix it, and all that. You will need to call in security to learn fixing this mess. StackSpot Code Analyzer already solves all those problems for you. It is already addressing the vulnerability, fixing the code, and explaining the fix, ensuring secure code from ZUP or its client, whether on StackSpot or not. This way, we guarantee the code being produced is secure. That's it. Hope you all enjoyed this tutorial. I really do hope you guys give this tool a whirl. It's a cool tool. Everyone I've shown it to was blown away, and me, Having been in the security game for years, I was super stoked about the potential of StackSpot AI, especially when you feed it text, and that is really awesome. Y'all should use StackSpot code analysis. Spread the word, because it'll make sure we're cranking out safer code every time. That's it. Thanks, everyone.